Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Best and Worst of Disneyland. I'm Tyler Crouch and I'm joined by Luella Loriola, Mary Jo Malata Willy. Hello. And a special guest today, you know him from Connecting with Walt, and he's here to talk about Walt Disney just just like y'all like it, Michael Bowling. <laughs> hey there, hi there, ho there. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Michael. It's really a pleasure. Appreciate it. I'm so delighted to be back to talk about Disneyland again. It's yes. been a while. Yeah, it's going to yeah, be awesome. We're going to have a good time today. And yeah. speaking of talking about Disneyland, today the topic is going to be the top eight ways that you can best connect with Walt Disney at the Disneyland Park. So, yeah, yeah one of the things we always brag about yeah. <laughs> is that, you know, we love Walt Disney World, but Disneyland is Walt's park. And what we wanted to do is share with you what makes Disneyland special. How can you find Walt at Disneyland? So we wanted to just run through a few ways. That, yeah, let's start that off with the first that. one. Okay. Yeah. So Disneyland Railroad, of course. Walt yeah. loved trains from the time he was a little boy in Marceline till the day he passed away. Uh, you know, there's always there's a joke that the only reason Walt built Disneyland was so he'd have a place to put his trains. So. <laughs> When, when I ride the train, I always think of how happy Walt was when we'd see photos of him and videos of him driving his train yeah. around the oh, park. Yeah. You've, that you've definitely seen all those the, all the old footage of Walt riding those little tiny train in his mm -hmm. backyard. I, mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. He's got the biggest smile on his face that I think I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the railroad is a completely natural fit. I 100% oh, okay. agree with that. Absolutely. And then the other thing that you know, I think people just run down Main Street and they don't think about this attraction anymore is the Disneyland story featuring great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, yeah, because a lot of folks don't realize that Walt just so much respected and admired our 16th president to the point that when he was 10 years old, he surprised all his teachers at school in Marceline dressed up as Abraham Lincoln and just recited the Gettysburg Address. And his teacher and principal were so impressed that they had Walt do it every single year until they moved out of Marceline. And so <laughs> I, I should say until they moved out of um, Kansas, actually, by that point. But, uh, but it was, um, and he hammed it up a little every year. What was one of that? the, what's one of the things that you, that you think is like, Walt Disney would be most proud, I mean, this was kind of the beginning of animatronics, right? This, well, the Tiki Birds started on okay, the animatronics, yeah, right. but this was the first full human figure right. that well, I the think Imagineers it, made. Right, and what, I'm, what comes to my mind is, of any subject that he could have picked, it was, to him, just obviously it was gonna be Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. He wanted to bring Abraham Lincoln to the to all of us so that we could experience him and I think that to him he, that had such a personal connection to him Absolutely. I, I think it's an, I think everybody should go to that attraction at least once yeah. mm -hmm. right? and I think the attraction itself not just Abraham Lincoln the whole attraction from the moment you enter you can really feel Walt because one of the yeah. things I really enjoy doing when I step in there is seeing the history of the Griffith Park the bench where we've all heard the legend of he sat there watching his daughters on the carousel. Mm -hmm. So there's a carousel horse there and an actual bench, one of the different benches that the Griffith Park had. And you feel Walt right there. And yeah. then when you go in and before you wait and enter to see the attraction, there's that photo I think that you're talking about of him dressed as, uh, as a young Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, I, there's I a lot of great. Yeah, a lot of great connecting with Walt mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. What's going to yeah. be our third one on the list, Michael? Third, I cheated. <laughs> There's two. That's okay. <laughs> two for one. Okay. I like it. Again, We're okay with that. A couple of things people probably run right by. Um, right on next door to the Main Street Cinema, look for the door on the Disneyland Casting Agency. It's a tribute to Walt. It says, open since 55. It takes people to make the dream a reality. Uh, Walter Elias, Disney founder and director emeritus. And what's interesting is people attribute this to cast members. What meant us, the guests in the park? Oh. Those are the people that it took to make the dream a reality. Walt hated photographs of, of the empty park without the guests in it. That famous photo of Walt walking through the castle, mm -hmm. he hated that photo because there were no people in the park. Oh, yeah. that makes a That's lot of sense. That's such an iconic photo, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other one, a lot of people probably don't know because it's so up high, Mickey's Toontown. Um, there's an inscription um, to uh, Laughagram Films Incorporated. It says W.E. Disney, directing animator. And this is a reference to Walt Disney and Ub Iwerks in their first film partnership in oh. Kansas City. And of course, Ub is credited with actually animating 
um, the first Mickey Mouse, the first version of Mickey. Oh, that's so. cool. I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, I yeah. knew. I there know, was, neither have I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was the one yeah. that I knew about in Main Street, yeah. but I did not know about yeah. the one in Toontown, so that's very cool yeah, to hear. It's, it's way up there. I yeah. think it's, a, um, I believe I'm, it's above City Hall out there, so you want to check okay. it out. Yeah. Town Hall. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. What was be what would be number four? That was a two for one right there. Yeah. <laughs> two for one. And I, I gave you I gave you a bonus there. Golden Horseshoe Review. And you're thinking, okay, well, Golden Horseshoe. You know, Disneyland unofficially opened really on July 13th, 1955, because Walt and Lillian and several dozen of their invited guests celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary there. And they had a private party. There was the premiere of the Golden Horseshoe. Review actually debuted on that night, and then it, and then Walt does have his box there, um, and there's photographic evidence of this. Walt's box is on the left, but it's the second one. I didn't know that. I always there. thought it was the first level. People do, but that's he would bring guests at least twice a week um, to the Golden Horseshoe to see the review. He loved the review, and he took them up to that box. That's a, that gives it a whole different and, perspective. And he got so excited at his 30th anniversary watching the Golden Horseshoe review, and I don't know if he was drinking scotch mists or what, <laughs> but he actually climbed down from the second... Oh, my, um, oh my gosh. Second, yeah. uh, yes. I wish we had video so, of that. I know. <laughs> There's photos. I have a photo. Okay. Um, and he climbed down to the stage from there. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's he was, very he cool. He was a little um, exuberant. Uh, his, his daughter Diane Disney Miller said on the way home she never saw him happier than that wow. night. Wow! Yeah. That's really cool. So, so yeah. that that is perfect. Mm -hmm. Did they have the chili back then? <coughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> as long as it was his canned Hormel chili, that he liked. You know? oh, that's what it's about, like anyway. So <laughs> really. So let's go on to the fifth okay. here. Well, let's stick around in Frontierland again. Yeah. Another thing we probably run by. Um, the Petrified Tree in Frontierland. Now, the story goes with this. Uh, Walt, Walt was traveling to a petrified forest, became fascinated with this big artifact and thought, what a perfect anniversary <laughs> gift for Lillian. <laughs> you know, he wanted to give so her a rock, right? Yeah, but not this so, and this thing's huge. So, and, and supposedly he had it shipped home. And, and the, the story, as Walt told it, is Lillian decided it was too big for their mantle. So she graciously donated it to Disneyland. Well, I was chatting with Marty Scalar, and he told me Walt never let the facts get in the way of a good story. And so actually, they have the shipping label that it was shipped directly to Disneyland. Mm. But what I like about this is that it showed the loving and playful relationship that Walt and Lillian had. Because yeah. Lillian went along with this story for years. Um, because she knew Walt, she understood Walt, she understood his playful nature. Um, and so she, uh, she they, they posed there for the dedication together, the dedication of the tree. Lillian is right there <laughs> giving her anniversary <laughs> gift to Disneyland. You know, knowing <laughs> <laughs> full well, you know, the, what, you know, what Walt was saying. That's so cute, and though. And I think it's just loving because it reminds you that, you know, even like 30 years after Walt passed away, Lillian still talked about how much she missed Walt. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and that's a great one too because it's kind of hidden in plain sight. Like mm -hmm. so many yeah. people walk by it on a regular basis, but you know, nobody really knows exactly the history of it and what it actually means to Disneyland and and it's that's that's a really great uh topic there. Let's go on to the next one. Well, let's just sort of walk around the river's bend over to uh, New Orleans Square. Okay. And I'm giving it, okay, another two for here. Okay. <laughs> um, go to That's Pir all right. <laughs> go, go to Pirates of the Caribbean. And, and that one, of course, that is the very last attraction that Walt helped design, give his input to. And um, um, sadly, he never saw the final product. But they did have the auction scene, another reason we're very sad to see it go. <laughs> he saw the yeah. full mock-up of the auction scene before he passed away, but they also had a huge working model in one of the sound stages. So they put him in a chair as if it were a boat, and they took him through the whole thing. And Wait, it was they put Walt level, Disney in, in a, a chair? chair uh, in, in the, in the working model that was laid out on the sound oh, stage. Yeah. In, um, at the studio, so Walt could see from the eyes of us um, what it was going wow. to look like. So Walt knew what it was going to look like. The reason he didn't experience it was he didn't feel it was show ready. So at the dedication mm. of New Orleans Square, 
um, he, he just wouldn't allow it to be open. He told everybody, don't let them force you to open it before it's ready, boys. And then sadly, oh. he passed away a short time later. It opened mm -hmm. just a couple months after he passed away. Yeah. So after you ride that wonderful attraction that, that Walt gave us and his Imagineers, go outside and look up above and see those beautiful, ornate New Orleans style railings. And look at the gold um, sort of filigree in there, the, um, that's uh, the ironwork. It says R, D, and W, D. That was supposed to be the Disney family apartments because they, they'd all had children and grandchildren by this point. They had outgrown that little apartment above the <laughs> <Yeah>. firehouse. <laughs> These are gonna be gorgeous apartments for both Walt and Roy. And after Walt passed away, um, Roy felt it would be too sad for the family to have the apartment there, so it was never completed. But the balcony was completed, so you can see the, the Walt and Roy's initials right. yeah. in there. It's really the, nice looking. It yes. is, yeah. And they did eventually make that the gallery, right? And then they yeah. turned the gallery into the dream suite, which, right. we, all, which we all wish we could go inside I know, now. right? <laughs> I know. I mean, I've been in it on tours, so now we have an idea of what yeah. it would have looked like. Yeah. But yeah, it's unfortunate that um, well, we, we didn't. We couldn't still go up there. Yeah. yeah, and and to your point, Tyler, when it was the gallery, we went in there. We couldn't really picture what the apartments would look like, like yeah. where the dining room and all that. But as the dream suite, now we can kind of visualize what it would be like if they actually lived you, up there. You know right? the counter when you went into the gallery. Right. Yeah, that was a, there was a sink under it. Are you serious? Yeah. That was supposed to be like a little bar area, <laughs> a little wet yeah. bar area. Yeah. Where we, like, oh, we could put a cash register. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they just yeah. put the cash register right on top of it. That's cool. But yeah. there's definitely much more space there than. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. They didn't, even yeah. with the dream suite, oh they did gosh. not build it out completely. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. yeah. some of it is still used for storage mm -hmm. and, and offices and. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right, next one. Next on Mickey Mouse meet and greet. And you're thinking, well, how odd. I mean, why Mickey Mouse? Well, for Walt, it all started with a mouse. And after Walt passed away, at the dedication of Walt Disney World, when Roy was up there, he said, I want Mickey with me. He is the closest person we have wow. to Walt being here. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, when you hug Mickey, you hug Walt. Yeah. So, um, that's a that's good nice. point. That's a really good, so now from now on when I hug Mickey, I'm gonna be, it's Walt that yeah. I'm mm -hmm. hugging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it does. Mickey, well, the original, especially the original playful, mischievous Mickey Mouse, that was Walt. Right, mm -hmm. that it was, was he even did the voice. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. he so. did, yeah. yeah. And it's funny actually with the newer Mickey cartoons, uh, he has a completely different voice than, you know, Mickey Mouse has uh, normally in any other setting. and. I, I, they've, they've kind of tried to bring a little bit of that gruffness that Walt Disney brought to the character because back. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, with the new, well, and also because, and also because he was a full-grown man, just going like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, like he, he, he didn't really have that high voice that Mickey Mouse has, but he tried his best. Oh yeah. And oh, spoiler alert, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean Walt was just friends with Mickey. He was yeah. just friends with Mickey. What am I talking about? So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have, we uh, have, we have one, one, one more. more. This is our I, last one on the list. I bet this is something we all do, and I think I'll, probably a lot of our friends out there do this too. Uh, it's the lamp, uh, you know, in, yeah. in, at, the, at, the, at Walt's apartment. I mean, how many of us, when we leave the park at yeah. night, go by and look at that lamp and say, thanks, Walt. What, what I want you to do is imagine on opening day, Walt standing there at that window, looking at all the guests streaming in mm -hmm. with his train pulling into the station. And he had tears of happiness running down his cheeks because his dream of a park where families can enjoy uh, time together and bringing so much of what he created on film to life was there now. And he literally was standing at that window crying. That's beautiful. And, um, so just think about that when you um, come into the park and think about Walt watching you, yeah. being happy to see you come in. And then when yeah. you leave the park, give a, give a tip of your mouse ears to Walt or to kiss. thank him for everything that, um, <laughs> all the joy that he brought us, which is what brings you here to us. Yeah, yeah so. definitely. <sighs> what a great list, Michael. That was really, <laughs> really good. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And we even took some off the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is, is like everything you yeah. do in Disneyland is like 
that is Walt's Park, like we've exactly. discussed over and over exactly. again. And yeah. just, so every single little thing you do has that inspiration. Even when we mentioned the Dream Suite earlier, they, they've redone that. They even tried to make it like his old plans, mm -hmm. you know? So it, they, they take it very seriously at Disneyland, there, and that's... There's, that's there's almost nothing at that park Walt hasn't touched. Right. Which is why when we were coming up with this, it was so difficult. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, when the whole park Walt touched, how do you yeah. narrow it down? So we tried to, to come up with the things that are so unique. It'll really help you reach out and touch Walt and have him reach out to you. Yeah. So there you go. That is going to be our top eight best ways to connect with Walt at Disneyland. Thank you so much to Michael Bowling for coming Yay. on and saying hi to us. With the, remember, you can uh, listen to Connecting with Walt once a week with him. What day does that come out? I'm sorry. On Fridays. On Fridays. Friends with me and so. my good pal, Gray, Craig Williams. Yeah, so you can check that out, and it's a really fun uh, show to listen to. And uh, thank you guys so much and for joining thank us. Thank you thank for you. letting me be a part of your day. <laughs> <laughs> All that right, was well, the best. <laughs> let, 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 us, uh, let us know in the comments below uh, what kind of ways you like to connect with Walt, and we'd really be interested to hear that. Mm -hmm. And we will see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.